afternoon and welcome to our industry day breakout session. First of all, a few uh, housekeeping rules. Uh, this session will be recorded. However, it will not be uh, distributed publicly. Uh, please feel free to post your questions via the, via the chat uh, function or alternatively, if you wish to ask a question or add a comment verbally, please raise your hand by using the hand icon on the top right corner of your screen. Uh, voila, and that's it. And then we can start the um, session. Sorry, I forgot to switch on my camera. Hopefully now it's on, yes. Okay, so here uh, to, today uh, I am here together with Bruno and Rion from uh, Rascom. Um, we, um, uh, we are going to uh, talk uh, uh, about the uh, SATA DSL new business model and uh, uh, the implications this has for uh, satellite operators and teleport operators. Um, so uh, first of all, let me uh, start with a short uh, introduction about uh, SATA DSL so that uh, I, I have the opportunity to explain you what we do and basically how we do it, which is a, a bit uh, uh, innovative, I would say. Uh, and then, uh, of course, we will uh, I will uh, give the floor to um, Bruno for uh, some uh, comments and inputs from his side, and then we can uh, uh, open the, um, the, the 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 discussion to uh, all the, the the participants. So for these, I will uh, share my screen so that I can show you this uh, brief uh, presentation in order to introduce the uh, company. Uh, yeah, so sharing screen this should be voila can you see my screen yes we can see it okay great okay so short story about sata dsl so uh, sata dsl is a satellite connectivity provider so we provide connectivity via satellite to customer scenarios where uh, terrestrial infrastructure are either uh, lacking or are um, unreliable. Uh, um, our uh, uh, mission is to uh, bring this connectivity and at the same time bring some kind of fresh air into the satellite con con connectivity market with the new uh, and uh, disruptive business model. I will explain you in a few in a few seconds. So uh, uh, we started our business a bit more than 10 years ago, uh, basically serving uh, ISP customers initially in sub-Saharan Africa. And we were uh, doing that in a very uh, traditional way, which was simply that we were working together with a specific satellite operator operating a specific satellite communication hub. And we were reselling the services that were built using this hub to these ISP customers. And those ISP customers were reselling the services to the, uh, to the end users. Uh, we very quickly uh, realized that we had uh, a number of uh, limitations by doing the, uh, the running the business in this way, uh, which were uh, related to, to uh, two main uh, areas. The first one was the uh, the availability of, of services, which kind of services we were able to offer. This was basically dictated by the hub. So uh, the, the services which were available was were the services which had been uh, thought by the engineers of the uh, SATCOM manufacturer company. So who is manufacturing the hub and the terminals. So that was the first big limitation. The second limitation was the uh, monitoring and the management all along the value chain. So the uh, hub uh, has the possibility to give access to the uh, uh, hub operator, of course, and the VNO operator, as you would normally call it in the satellite uh, jargon. Uh, 
uh, but then all the value chain downstream, uh, you, don't, you generally you don't have any possibility to give access to this uh, value chain in order to monitor, manage, uh, benefit of value added services. So oh, SP, first step, our ISPs were blind basically. And so they were complaining that if the customer was complaining for whatever reason, they were not able to do anything. And so this is the reason why we started already uh, in 2011, basically very shortly after we had started the, the business, to develop a, um, a, a platform which could somehow solve these two problems that I've just uh, explained. So we started initially basically building a kind of gateway which would allow on one end to collect information about the the subtle the terminals the links and so on and give access downstream to customers to this information and then we enriched this with the full uh, um, uh, potential with the, the full uh, range of services that we have now uh, which uh, uh, okay, so did this uh, we already passed, uh, uh, which is summarized with this uh, this uh, slide. So this slide is showing basically uh, the on one end the remote sites which are on the on the field on the on the right side. Those remote sites are connected are collected to the to the teleports to the hub, and what we do, which is. Uh, uh, different from the standard way of operating is that once this uh, communication arrives to the teleport or to the to the hub they do not go into the internet but we ask the hub and teleport operator to put all these uh, uh, data streams into tunnels that are then routed to our uh, infrastructure that you see indicated here with the name nexat which is the commercial name of the of the infrastructure, where basically we um, uh, define and enforce the uh, end user services. So uh, we decide into our platform for each IP packet which uh, the, the customer asks to get through if this uh, uh, packet needs to be uh, forwarded, uh, so transferred, dropped, delayed or rerouted. At the same time, we also uh, uh, Im implement a connection between the teleports and the hubs and our infrastructure in order to collect all the monitoring and management information in order to provide all these value added services to a value chain, which is in general more complex than just one step below the uh, hub operator. Um, uh, where uh, you can have uh, local ISPs, resellers of those local ISPs, customers with multiple sites that want to manage their network, or even the customer with a single site wants to know what's happening, uh, if he has consumed this volume, if he's on a volume-based service, or if the data rates that he is experiencing are in line with what has been promised and so on. Um, so the, 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 this is the genesis of the of the of the of the of the platform, and this brings me uh, back basically to the uh, offering that we have towards the different uh, players in the value chain. So, uh, of course, on the right side, the more classical customers, which are basically local ISPs and uh, end users government enterprises uh, so, so, so we, we focus more on government and enterprises but, but there are also customers who are uh, in the in the so area or uh, in even in the consumer uh, area some, sometimes uh, but then um, we uh, realized uh, um, at certain point that all this infrastructure that we have built uh, is a value which can be used not only by ourselves, but also by teleport and hub operators in order for them to extend the, uh, the, the their reach, to extend their set of services. So this is the uh, basis of this new disruptive business model that we call platform as a service 
that we offer to teleports and hub operators for hub-based services. So this business model is, uh, uh, is basically uh, allowing them to, uh, um, to um, extend, let's say, their, uh, their, uh, their reach. I will come to that in a, in a, in a second. So, uh, uh, from, so from the customer point of view, the main benefits are related to the fact that uh, the customer can enjoy any service independently of the technology that he is uh, implementing. So he can have a, an iDirect uh, rather than a NewTek or UHP or UX or whatever or Comtech uh, terminal. And so corresponding hub, the services he can enjoy are independent from that. Of course, we cannot uh, overcome the physical limitations, but apart from the physics, any kind of service is available on any kind of platform, just because the services are not implemented in the hub, but are implemented in our infrastructure. Uh, then of course, there are all the value added services in terms of monitoring management and more. There are plenty, we, are, we don't have the time to go into the details of all that. Uh, from the teleport uh, point of view, what is what we offer to teleport and satellite operators is basically the possibility to, first of all, monetize any unused or additional capacity they might have. So basically what we say is you connect to our platform, you contribute this capacity to the platform, and from day one, you have access to our a network of resellers of ISPs, of partner ISPs downstream, who will be very happy to be able to access an additional offering, if this offering, of course, is competitive, uh, and then will uh, commercialize this capacity that you contribute to the to the platform, and this is this can be very small, very big. You can start small and then grow with basically no capex. Uh, and then the second uh, offering that we make to the uh, satellite and teleport operators is the possibility of using the platform for their own uh, customers, for their own channel, so that uh, basically they can enjoy all these uh, value-added services, all this uh, um, independence of the service from the technology, also for their own customers. And we provide them with all the tools in order, in order to define those uh, uh, customers, to give them access to the platform, all these in white label uh, with, uh, uh, so that the branding policy of the partner is fully uh, respected and uh, enforced. And then as a final point for, especially for teleport operators, the possibility of accessing services in areas where they are not present without any investment. So if a teleport, which is based in Europe and has basically uh, uh, infrastructure in Europe as a customer and that is requiring, requiring a, 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 a service uh, which is not limited only to, to Europe or to, to, to areas that are covered by the teleport, the, this teleport can extend its coverage uh, thanks to all the capacity that is already connected to our platform in a very uh, easy and quick way without the need for additional investment. So it's a kind of, it be, the platform becomes a kind of uh, uh, let's say, marketplace for satellite uh, capacity. So this is basically in a nutshell what we are, uh, uh, what we are doing. This is, of, what is the relation with cloud is of course the fact that the, the, the platform is cloud-based. Basically we have part of it, which is uh, actually cloud-based, which is all the part which is ready with the mon monitoring and management. And then we have the point of presence which are the, the points of presence. We have three uh, all over the globe for the time being, uh, which are the, 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 the parts which are uh, processing the real-time traffic and so need to be close to the hub in order to avoid the latency. So this is the, uh, um, the introduction to the business of Satadecel, how we uh, run this business 
and uh, from a technology point of view, what is the, um, the, the, the technology that we have uh, uh, developed. So uh, with that, I will maybe uh, leave uh, the floor to uh, Bruno to uh, tell us a little bit about RASCOM and also what we have done together until now uh, between uh, RASCOM and uh, Santa BSN. Bruno. Thank you, Fulvio. Um, hi, everybody. Uh, I'm Bruno Henry, and I, I work for Roscom Star. So we, we have a, a satellite at three degree east, and it, which is covering the whole of Africa in a C and K, KU band. And uh, where we've been working for the past couple of years with uh, Satellite DSL, uh, I would say with success, that we are probably one of the first ones to implement uh, what uh, Fulvio said. So as a satellite operator, uh, what we wanted to do is to go up the value chain. So uh, first of all, uh, we had partnerships with some uh, teleports or our own teleports so that we could offer uh, like VSAT services. But this is not enough. Uh, so uh, we have to go again up the value chain by offering services that are not in our portfolio. So uh, I will give an example. Uh, when you sell VSAT, usually you sell uh, uh, indefinite uh, traffic. But typically, with the platform of SAT ADSL, we could resell uh, VSAT for people who just want to a certain number of gigabytes. So rather than developing our own platform, uh, managing this platform, and so on, we have this partnership with uh, SAT ADSL. And we use their service. So typically today we can resell a package per gigabyte, I don't know, 10 gigabytes per month, 100 gigabytes per month, rather than a simple VSAT. So this is really adding value. Also, uh, SAT ADSL is doing very uh, uh, intelligent traffic shaping, which is also uh, allow, which is not our, the, the, the heart of our, uh, our job, you know. Uh, so this is also helping us to have basically a complete portfolio. Uh, so as a satellite operator, really this is adding a layer that we don't have and we don't have time to, or, or, or uh, I would say the uh, competence to develop it and we leave it to satellite DSL. So same for, for instance, uh, some billing, you know, based on gigabytes and so on. And so that's the first aspect. The second aspect is, uh, what uh, Fulvio said at the beginning. So we all have a bit of a spare capacity. So what we did is we uh, put uh, this spare capacity on the teleport and we say, okay, Satya DSL, we have a scheme on the pay as you go. Uh, so we dedicate this capacity and, and, and the pay as you go scheme works very well. And this brought um, quite a number of connection and this allows us to fill up to fill up the the capacity for this kind of services. So, and now uh, also what Fulvio said is that if we need coverage in other area, we have the same platform. So I think it was very what what they did was very intelligent. So uh, it's a kind of overlay with multiple satellites without having uh, their own teleport, and eventually this is the service layer. So this is the, what the end customer wants. They want the, the they want service. You know, they don't care if there is one teleport, fifty teleports, and what is the size of the antenna and so on. <laughs> the end customer they want a service, and this is uh, what uh, SATA DSL achieved. So, uh, I just want to testify that it's a it's a very good uh, very good scheme, and uh, uh, I hope uh, other customers can benefit from from this and extend the coverage thanks to this uh, intelligent platform. To you, Fulvio. Thank you very much, Bruno. Thank you very much for the nice words and for your uh, um, testimony on on this. Uh, by the way, uh, the, what you said uh, give gave me the give me gives me the opportunity also to uh, to 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 give some more uh, elements because you you made the reference to the uh, billing and the payment which is also something very, very important, especially for, uh, um, um, for companies like ours, by the way, who are working on markets 
which might be a bit more difficult sometimes, especially for what concerns uh, payments and collection of payments. So this is, uh, this is something that we realized very soon uh, when we started our business. And this is one of the reasons why we have developed the, uh, let's say, I would say a, a, an extensive and sophisticated system for uh, uh, building and, and payments. Uh, which includes, uh, and this is, I have to say, it's unique in, it's really unique in, I mean, a little bit of, uh, the, the whole platform is a bit unique in the, mar in the market, but this is something which really, uh, even in the, 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 the BSS that I, I have seen, it's something which I never uh, really uh, saw on the market, is the fact that we give the possibility to have online electronic payments but on prices which are fixed downstream in the value chain so we are not fixing the prices but we are giving the tools downstream to the local service providers to fix the price to decide what they want to offer as services for their own customers and to fix the prices to the end users so that they can decide what is your their margins so of course they will have a price uh, a buying price i would say a cost for the service which is our uh, price to them but then what is the price that they make to the end user is something which is up to them uh, we have experience, we have, it's, I mean, it's a hard uh, experience on the market, the fact that uh, conditions vary from country to country, from region to region, and it's a completely uh, a, the, a dream to imagine that you can impose your conditions everywhere, because maybe in one country you have a levy by the government for uh, visa, in another country you have another, uh, so each country you have different regulations, different situation, those are the, the essence of what the local ISP do. They get the licenses, they, let, they are they dealing with the local customer, the local authorities. So they know what they can afford in terms of the price to the end user. And so the payment facility that we offer allow them to decide uh, what is the price and to collect electronic payments uh, at, according to those prices which are fixed uh, locally. So this is uh, uh, one of the features that we, that we uh, together with a number of other features which are related with the bidding and payment, I think it, it's also very uh, important and interesting for the uh, teleport and uh, satellite operators for the uh, ISPs. Uh, uh, and all these can be, uh, let's say, can be uh, tailored and configured according to the needs of the different uh, uh, players in the in the value chain. So we try to put as much as possible flexibility in all these uh, uh, systems in order to uh, best adapt to the needs of the uh, the customers and of of the whole uh, value value chain. Um, I don't know if uh, maybe after all this uh, we can maybe ask uh, um, attendants to if they have any question or, or any remark. Uh, so as I said in the beginning, you can either write down uh, questions into the chat into the chat or you can uh, simply raise your hand. There is a button on the menu that you have just in front of you with the, where you can. Uh, um, raise your hand and then in that case if you raise your hand then our uh, technical support will give you the floor and then you can uh, uh, you can talk and express yourself please don't hesitate I don't, I don't see any hands going up for the time being. <laughs> Maybe I have a question for, for you, full view. So, yes. uh, yeah, you started with Africa and so on. So we see that you are expanding over now over Asia and Latin America. So, uh, Latin America, so you're covering the whole world now or? How does yes. It... 
Yes, yes. That, that, that's basically what we, I mean, it's uh, in a way is the result and the advantage of our business model, which allowed us to expand on a global basis in a relatively very short time. Uh, the, 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 the reason is, the, I mean, you can imagine that if we wanted, according to a classical business model, expand worldwide, we should have started by renting capacity from several uh, satellite operators all over the, 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 the world, which, is a, which, which can be a relatively large investment. I mean, it's not the investment like the Starlinks or the OneWeb, <laughs> but for a small company like ours, it might become very quickly unaffordable. Thanks to the business model that we propose with this platform as a service and revenue sharing model that you that you know very well, we have managed to ex to extend our coverage on a worldwide basis in a relatively short time because by uh, uh, by um, signing agreements with different satellite and teleport operators in different areas of the world, they have basically contributed their capacity, their capacity to the platform. And from day one, basically, we have a presence, a potential presence, maybe with a very small bandwidth in the beginning. But then as soon as the market take off, we can uh, grow this bandwidth and start operations in, uh, in, in the region. And so I can tell you that at the moment we are, we have, uh, uh, let's say, non-negligible operations already in uh, South America, which are growing, and we are starting now uh, in, in Asia. So, uh, but we uh, can offer basically tomorrow uh, uh, connectivity I would say on a on a apart from the the, the polar uh, regions, I would say basically everywhere uh, in the world, thanks to the mix of uh, C K U and K A band capacity, which is available through our uh, through our platform. So it's it, it, it's true what you said. We are expanding. Uh, worldwide, following let's say this uh, innovative business uh, business uh, model uh, approach. With with Rascom, we are uh, covering uh, basically uh, Africa. We have uh, uh, capacity, I think, on two of your. Uh, spot beams, one covering the North Africa and the other one covering uh, the more uh, uh, southern regions, if I remember correctly. True, true. And I think you have the, the C-band as well on another teleport. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes, 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 correct. So there is a... Um, a question coming in is, as we are in a webinar organized by SES, could you please disclose which SES satellite are already available on Nexat? Um, so I uh, uh, I do not remember by art all the SES satellites which are connected, but there are a few. <laughs> uh, for sure, I can tell you that there is one which is Astra 4A, uh, covering in KU band uh, sub Saharan Africa. Uh, then we have for sure SES4, which is covering the Americas. Um, there is probably also uh, some more, but I uh, I don't I don't remember all of them. There is one probably covering the um, uh, North America. I should check. We have a. a uh, a service catalog, and I can tell you, it's a, it's a brick, so it's not easy to 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 uh, to, to remember all by 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 art. Uh, there is also another question uh, asking if we provide services in Mexico and Central America. We uh, have coverage there, and we have, uh, for the time being, uh, we are building in a network of uh, uh, ISPs also in that region, in uh, in the Americas. For the timing, we have some uh, partners 
um, especially in South America, in Mexico and Central America. I don't think we have already partners, but we are very, we would be very happy to uh, get in touch with uh, companies who have uh, uh, interest in those in those regions. But we have coverage, so we have uh, for sure satellite. Uh, uh, coverage available that can cover those regions and so we can get uh, in business with uh, uh, ISPs, with the local uh, uh, players who have uh, the possibility to, uh, to sell services in the, in the region. Um, then there is another question about the Leo Mio uh, services via, via Nexat. So for the time being, we are uh, offering services mainly, uh, no, I would say uh, exclusively on geo uh, satellites. But in principle, uh, the, 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 the platform can be used for any kind of orbit, any kind of uh, frequency band. Of course, there are, there will be probably some uh, adaptation to be made in order to uh, comply and to, to connect with the Leo Mio constellations, but this is in the pipeline. So we are working on that. We are in discussions with several Leo and Mio uh, operators. Uh, in, some, in some cases, uh, we have to see, uh, let's say, the relevance of our offering in relation with the business model. So we basically for large trunking uh, or backholing uh, connections, we do not uh, probably have anything uh, special to offer. Uh, our offering is more relevant when you are talking about hub-based uh, communication, so shared uh, uh, bandwidth and hub-based uh, subcom. Uh, but we, we are looking at this and uh, there will be uh, for sure developments in this, uh, in this area. Uh, in terms of compatibility with uh, hub manufacturer platforms, we started in the very beginning with uh, NewTek, sat triple play at the time. Then of course we extended the, the, the compatibility with uh, NewTek uh, Dialog. Uh, then we have uh, uh, developed our interfaces also with the iDirect uh, evolution. Uh, then we developed the interfaces to uh, UX Jupiter 2. Uh, and now we are in the process of developing, uh, let's say, in the we, we are going to develop very soon. Uh, interfaces with the two other manufacturers. We basically, we follow the commercial opportunity opportunities which are coming, and that the next two in the pipeline are uh, UHP and uh, Comtech. But then, whenever uh, there is a need, uh, there is a, a let's say a commercial opportunity, then we will follow uh, up the commercial opportunity and we'll make the development which is necessary in order to make the. Um, the platform compatible with those uh, uh, platform, uh, with those um, um, hub uh, platforms. Uh, as far as, as uh, let's say, uh, as far as the uh, hub uh, exposes uh, state of the art APIs, it's uh, I would say I cannot say that it's a standard business, but let's say it's not uh, rocket science at, <laughs> at least. So. It's something that we can do at, uh, at any moment. Uh, then I, I see another question, which is related with the commitment and CAPEX for satellite operators and teleports and ISPs. So uh, we um, realize that uh, in, a, uh, in an environment like uh, the, 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 the one we, uh, we, 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 uh, we work, in satellite communications, uh, commitments are something very difficult to take at the moment because of uh, volatility of price, in, in uncertainties about the investments and so on. So we we uh, basically we try as much as possible to, to work with no capex uh, or full opex um, uh, full opex uh, uh, schemes, uh, and we take ourselves as much as possible 
all the possible capex which is necessary. So basically for a satellite operator, a teleport or, a, or an ISP, in order to connect to the platform and become part of the ecosystem, there is no investment. The, the, the system has been thought in order to minimize the investment. So we, uh, when we connect to a teleport, for example, we send uh, a couple of uh, routers uh, in order to set up the tunnels, but this is something that we take uh, ourselves on our own uh, expenses. There is no uh, investment for the for the teleport. Of course, from the teleport side, there is only just a marginal uh, cost, which is related with realizing their internal IP routing in order to be able to connect to our uh, infrastructure. But there is basically no uh, no capex. Um, yeah, that's basically it. In terms of capex, there might be some cases where we have we are discussing at the moment a few cases where there are some uh, teleport operators or satellite operators or service providers who require to have the um, let's say the full infrastructure at least the 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 the, the, the full the, the 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 infrastructure which is. Uh, controlling the user traffic to be in the country. So in that case, we need to uh, have a local point of presence. And this, of course, comes with a, an investment. Uh, but also in, the, in, in that case, of course, we have to see what is the return on investment. But also in that case, we often, uh, if it's a um, uh, revenue sharing model that we, if we can work on ba on the basis of the revenue sharing model that we generally propose, we uh, take the, the 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 investment on our own uh, charges also for this uh, new uh, point of uh, of uh, of presence. Uh, in case a teleport want to use Nexat for its own clients, how does it work? May the teleport use its own brand and its own public IP range? Yes, absolutely, yes. Um, so the teleport, the, the system is based on the white label uh, approach so that everything can be uh, pro, pro, um, provided in white label and uh, the, the teleport can brand it can uh, with its own brand and the uh, Saturday cell will, uh, brand will not be uh, seen uh, anywhere. Uh, as I told, it's very simple. We have to connect the, the teleport to our infrastructure, and this is done uh, through setting up uh, tunnels for the uh, IP traffic and the connection to the hub for API access uh, for monitoring and management. And then uh, we provide the, to the teleport the tools in order to uh, register the terminals or to register the ISPs that then will register the terminals and to manage the complete network uh, of ISPs, give them the rights they want to uh, assign them, uh, if they want to allow them to resell uh, vouchers based on uh, prepayments and all this. All this is managed, uh, let's say we delegate as much as possible all these uh, uh, to the um, to different players in the value chain, including the, the, the teleports, of course. Uh, and in terms of uh, uh, IP uh, ranges, we can also accommodate for IP ranges coming from the teleport or uh, alternatively coming from the, the customers. This requires some uh, uh, minor, uh, uh, let's say, updates into the uh, registry databases, but it's something that can be uh, arranged without any, any trouble. Any additional question or uh, Remark. Maybe I can, uh, in order to answer to one of the previous questions, I can quickly look up for uh, the SES uh, coverage, SES based coverage. Um, 
and then do it quickly, I guess. So I see here uh, Astra for A, SSA 3B, SS4, as I said before. Yeah, so those are the ones that I can find quickly without further research. SCS 15, I see also in the list. Yeah. Okay, so I I don't know if uh, we want we to- We have two new questions from Michel as well. Yeah, okay, let me check it. Ah, how do you manage competition among teleports? Are they visible by the clients? Uh, can a teleport see the clients of the other uh, teleports connected to Nexat? No, no, no. We, um, we uh, basically, we manage the uh, competition among, uh, among uh, teleports by Isolating somehow the 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 the, the Nexat, uh, it's it, it has to be seen as a kind of gateway which is isolating the provisioning from the of the service from the usage of the service. So the uh, the users of the service downstream Nexat, so being them ISPs or or teleports themselves, they will uh, know. Of course, which satellite we are using because this is needed for uh, technical uh, uh, needs, but they will not know which teleports they are going to, uh, the, the traffic is going through. So that basically it's a, and each teleport which is providing capacity can decide if they want to uh, uh, allow certain users to access or not to their uh, capacity. So if uh, a teleport uh, tell us, uh, please uh, make this capacity available, but do not offer to this and that uh, uh, competitor, then we, uh, we, 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 we apply this policy. Uh, all the uh, visibility, let's say, of what is available downstream can be uh, fine-tuned uh, so that we can uh, ensure that the, 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 the commercial policies of the uh, teleports are respected. Uh, and on the other end, a teleport who is selling through our channel will be able to see that there is a certain capacity which is used. It, it will be able to see the terminals which are registered on that capacity, which is the usage of the bandwidth of all, that, of all those uh, terminals, but they will not be able to see who is behind the terminal, which kind, which ISP, which uh, uh, customer is using. Uh, they, they are able to do that if in case it's their own ch channel, of course, but if it's a channel of our channel or a channel of a tele of another teleport, of course, they will not be able to see who are these uh, customers in order to avoid the possible, let's say, um, unfair uh, competition. So we, we, we try, to, we, we keep basically the provisioning and the uh, usage of the, of the bandwidth somehow uh, separated uh, in order to, uh, to avoid that there might be any interference and any uh, unpleasant, let's say, uh, behavior by the one or, or, the, or the other. <clears throat> and there is another question, who decides the prices of the services sold via Nexat? So the prices of the services are, since we, uh, the business model, as I said, is based on uh, revenue sharing, the prices are agreed 
together with the one who contributes the capacity, being the teleport or the satellite operator or the two. Because in some cases, we have tripartite agreements with the, uh, satellite operators and uh, teleports. So uh, basically, together with the satellite, with the capacity provider, we agree the prices of the services, which services we want to offer to the market, and at which prices. Uh, and this is a, I would say, is a common uh, decision which has to be based on a, a commercial, I would say, market trade-off, which is on the one end, everybody would like to maximize is revenue, but on the other end, you have to confront yourself with the competition. So uh, you cannot uh, uh, say set the price point which is above uh, the, the what the market is ready to, to accept. Uh, and so we have to, uh, let's say, trade off between the two together with the, the capacity provider and is a common interest uh, to, to to design the best uh, price policy, which uh, uh, on the one end uh, is uh, affordable and is attractive for the customer, but on the other end, which allow all of us to uh, make our living basically, basically out of it. So it's a, it's, a, it's a process that we run together with the uh, satellite operator slash teleport operators. Uh, also based on our experience on the market, we now we on some markets we have uh, quite some experience, and so we can help with uh, with setting these uh, these prices. Uh, and sometimes this price setting is also something which depends on a number of additional parameters which are related with the reliability of the teleports. So there are a number of considerations that can enter into the, uh, into the, um, into the equation. But uh, uh, of course, uh, all this needs to be done in view of the fact that we will have uh, uh, customers that will have to buy those services. So if the services are priced uh, out of the market uh, prices, then uh, the result will be that there will be no success, basically. No yeah, I, I can testify uh, for you that, yeah, this is an open discussion between the uh, uh, the operator and, and yourselves. And uh, so you, you know the benchmark of the market and so on. So we have to adjust the uh, the final price together. And that's a, that's a good uh, a good converging uh, converging way to ensure that uh, we are competitive on the market uh, while trying to maximize the, the revenue of each party so i think it's a good uh, good method uh, last Another question that I see, uh, how do you manage the technical support across the value chain? So the technical support is, uh, um, so it's multi-layer technical support. The first layer of technical support necessarily is provided by the local ISPs. Uh, let's say in general, uh, we work through local ISPs in case, uh, in few cases where we work with large international organizations who want to have a single point of contact, we deal directly with those uh, customers. But then also in these cases, we use our local partners as uh, uh, um, our ends, let's say, on the, on the, on the field. Uh, uh, so that they, because in any case, you will you will need to make a local installation and to uh, provide local support in case of of troubles. So the uh, the first layer is then in general the local ISP, and then the local ISP, in case they cannot solve the problem, then they, they have some tools because thanks to the platform they can see what's happening, so they can already do some troubleshooting. Uh, locally, in case they do not, uh, uh, they cannot solve the problem, then they escalate the problem to uh, to us or to the teleport. If the teleport is acting as uh, is is uh, is going through its own channel, so we have uh, within the this is one of the value added services, of course, of the platform. Within the platform, we have set up a we have developed a 
uh, ticketing system, which allows us to end the partners as well, to have a centralized place where all the support activities are recorded, all the tickets, all the issues are recorded uh, in order to optimize the handling of all that so that uh, you know shifts uh, people working in shift uh, handing over uh, one ticket from one person to, to another so all this is done let's say in a professional way using a, a ticketing uh, system uh, which uh, uh, allows this multi-layer uh, escalation uh, so that uh, 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 in a typical case, the customer uh, complains with the ISP, the ISP introduces a ticket, the ticket arrives to our support, our support try to solve it. If it's not possible to solve it, then it will escalate it to the teleport and so on. So uh, it's a, uh, let's say, a typical, uh, uh, typical uh, uh, chain where the, uh, the, 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 the issue is uh, escalated up to the level where it can be uh, it can be solved. Uh, also, taking into account the case where is the teleport who is selling through his own channel, and then in that case, it's the other way around. From the ISP, it goes to the teleport, and then the teleport is able to escalate it to us if it's if the, the issue is uh, uh, related with something that the teleport cannot solve by themselves. Okay, so I think that we are uh, nicely and gently getting to the end of the session. It's, uh, I, I think I have a few um, uh, things to say before uh, the, the end. Uh, let me find, <laughs> this was summarized in an email that was sent to, the, uh, to all the, 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 the organizers. Uh, so I have, first of all, to thank a lot for attending this uh, session, <laughs> which I would have done if, if, even if I was not instructed to do so. <laughs> and then I have to remind you that uh, uh, to tune in tomorrow for the uh, Industry Day 21 break, Breakthrough Day Plenary Sessions, on transforming broadcast audience analytics and the NGSO landscape, maximizing advantages in orbit. And uh, uh, then these plenary sessions will also be followed by uh, other breakout sessions from uh, a team, isotropic and ST uh, engineering. So with this, uh, maybe we can uh, close the session unless there is uh, any final uh, comment, question, remark, or idea that comes from any one of the participants. It seems there is no additional comment. So, Thank you very much to everybody for attending, for listening, and for asking questions. And uh, voila. And see you. See you tomorrow. Bye. Bye bye.